Okay, I'm back again. This time I'm trying to understand antimicrobial drugs and the mode of action. It's very confusing to me, but uh, I think I'm just going to try and talk about it and see if I can figure it out. So, uh, first we're going to talk about the beta-lactams, and of course these are the most well, well-known drugs. And this group is inhibiting steps in the cell wall uh, synthesis and murine assembly, which means that they are breaking down the uh, peptidoglycan uh, wall. So, um, uh, so the peptid, uh, the beta lactams. You would have, for example, penicillin G, or it has here uh, uh, cephalothin, which is a first generation cephalosporin. And if you remember that the cephalosporins in the generations they uh, first started with uh, gram positive and gra and then gradually moved towards the gram negative. Then we have the semi-synthetic penicillins such as ampicillin and amoxicillin and these are um, uh, hitting more of the gram negatives uh, so uh, moving on the glycopeptides vancomycin so you might when you hear vancomycin uh, you might think of uh, methicillin resistant staph aureus and staph aureus being gram positive uh, bacteria uh, you think you must remember that vancomycin is not for gram-negative bacteria. Um, so those are for these are the main ones in inhibiting steps in the cell wall synthesis. Then moving on to what's called suicide inhibitors of so beta-lactamases. You know that um, certain bacteria have beta-lactamases, uh, which uh, can destroy the um, the beta lactam ring, uh, which uh, is present in certain pe uh, penicillins, and so it, they don't basically they don't work. So, for example, when amoxicillin was used, um, it didn't work. But when you add it with uh, uh, clavulonic acid, it works. So we have this clav uh, clavamox. So clavulonic acid, you remember, there's a suicide inhibitor of beta lactamases and. I was trying to read about what it means to be suicide inhibitor. It was very confusing. But uh, for now, I'm just going to remember that. I'm going to read uh, more about it in the future. Then, um, drugs that inhibit the cell metabolism. Uh, folate synthesis, we're talking about uh, folic acid. And that if you stop uh, the uh, if you stop folic, folic acid, you're going to stop uh, uh, other processes and the cell that leads to uh, the uh, cell uh, breakdown in the cell metabolism and, 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 the, 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 and basically killing the, uh, the bacteria. So those are the sulfonamides or the sulfur drugs. Okay, so continuing on, we're just going to look at a few examples of these antimicrobials and their mode of action. So as for those that inhibit translation and protein synthesis, we look at some examples. Uh, first is the for the aminoglycosides, streptomycin. And then for the mac uh, macrolides, erythromycin. So erythromycin, if you remember, is uh, for gram positives. And then tetracyclines, tetracycline, that's easy to remember. So those inhibit the translation or protein synthesis. So they can't make proteins. Um, and then uh, for those that inhibit the nucleic acid synthesis, um, so RNA, DNA, um, we're talking about the quinolones. So one of the, the quinolones representative of quinolones would be ciprofloxacin and, and the rifamycin, um, so rifampin or rif, uh, rifampicin. And uh, then for those that damage the cytoplasmic membrane, polypeptides such as bacitracin. And one thing you can remember about bacitracin is a triple antibiotic ointment. Uh, so are we understanding this, Simon? Are you getting this? I don't know. That's why I'm making these videos, and hopefully if I look at them again, I'm going to get them. So let's continue on with this. Okay, come on now. So let's try to remember these. Aminoglycosides, streptomycin, yay, streptomycin, macrolides, oh, erythromycin, erythromycin, 
Tetracyclines, tetracycline. That's very nice. These inhibit translation, protein synthesis. Quinolones, ciprofloxacin. Yay. Rifamycins, rifampin. Polypeptides, bacitracin. Okay, let's go, go, go. Okay, we need to back up a little bit and think about these drugs. Uh, which ones are bacteriostatic and which ones are bactericidal. Bacteriostatic drugs are the ones that allow the, uh, the body's immune system to take over. So these are just inhibiting protein synthesis. They're not, um, not killing, they're not killing uh, the uh, bacteria completely. Uh, so, so for those that have an intact immune system, you might uh, use uh, tetracyclines, doxycycline, macrolides, or the sulfur, uh, sulfur drugs. But for those that may have some, uh, some immune system, then you would consider using the penicillins, vancomycins, cephalosporins, carbapenems, aminoglycosides, monobactams, fluoroquinolones, metronidazole. And of course, you know, for TB, for example, you'd use uh, isoniazid, and then you have rifampin. So let's keep this in mind. Okay, now this is something I really like. Uh, I found this in uh, the Crush, uh, Crush Step One book, and this is a really nice picture of how these drugs are working. So um, we can t see a very nice example of the cell. So, for example, folate synthesis inhibitors we just talked about. We have the sulfur drug, sulfonamides, and the trimethoprim. So here's the folate synthesis, so these are going to stop, stop that. Uh, cell wall synthesis inhibitors, we talked about these, very easy to remember, the beta-lactam antibiotics, carbapenem, cephalosporins, monobactams, and penicillins, and other antibiotics, bacitracin, um, phosphomycin, and vancomycin. Okay. So then the RNA polymerase inhibitors, rifampin, okay, so we can see this process here. And then for DNA gyrase inhibitors, fluoroquinolones. And then cell membrane inhibitors, for example, amphotericin, ketoconazole, and poly polymyxin. So you might remember uh, keto ketoconazole as uh, uh, a drug uh, for, um, as an antifungal and other uses, I can't remember right now, oh boy, my brain is melting. Okay, so then protein synthesis inhibitors, aminoglycosides, chloramphenicol, clindamycin, microlides, mupirocin, and strep uh, streptogramins, and tetracyclines. So you might think, that, well, these are uh, not bactericidal, these are um, allowing the, the body's immune system to take over. So uh, they are just uh, holding it back so the body can take, take over. They are bacteriostatic. Okay, so let's try to remember these.